BMW's second generation G26 era 4 Series Grand Coupe offers a more flexibly stylish choice in the profitable sector for premium badged Gran Turismo style mid-sized executive cars. For once, two rear doors don't compromise the visual appeal of a model of this kind, nor does their extra weight dilute the handling purity. Of course, there are more practical choices in this segment, and certainly cheaper ones. After trying this BMW though, you might not be quite so attracted to them. For brand enthusiasts, there's certainly plenty to like. Electric cars are the future, but for most people, not quite yet. Which is why, at present, we find ourselves in this curious hinterland where brands must build, design and market the same kind of car, both in combustion form and as an EV. Take the model in question here, the second generation version of BMW's 4 Series Grand Coupe. It's a GT-style mid-sized premium executive challenger, just like the brand's all-electric i4 launched at about the same time, based on the same CLAR platform and built at the same Munich factory. To be fair, the 4 Series Grand Coupe is a hatch, whereas the i4 is a saloon. And its interior is different from the i4 because the front of cabin design borrows everything from the two other 4 Series models BMW offers, the two-door coupe and the convertible. As with those two cars, the Munich maker has worked harder this time round to make both the styling and the drive experience more distinct from the closely related 3 Series model. The original F36 Series version of this 4 Series Grand Coupe was launched back in 2014 to belatedly counter the threat posed by Audi's A5 Sportback, a Gran Turismo-style mid-sized five-door model launched in 2010, which offered a set of conventional rear doors while managing to stay relatively stylish and individual. In response, the Mark I 4 Series Grand Coupe offered Ingolstadt stiff competition and sold very well for the Munich maker, shifting 860,000 units in F36 form accounting for around 50% of all 4 Series sales. This is the sort of car BMW has always done very well, a mid-level, rear-driven, performance-orientated model with perfect weight distribution and a purposeful demeanour. We've already seen this Mark II 4 Series design in two-door coupe and convertible forms. The loyal audiences for those variants tested by the divisive look BMW chose for this second generation model, courtesy of the installation of this retro style vertical front grille. Somehow that's not quite such an issue here because your eyes are most equally drawn to the sleeker profile of this lower, wider and more sophisticated G26 series Grand Coupe. It's more spacious and far more advanced inside than its predecessor. And as you'd want, it's also more efficient beneath the bonnet, where some of the engines now feature the brand's 48-volt mild hybrid tech. There's a wide-reaching brief here. This car must replace not only the previous F36 series Grand Coupe, but also the now discontinued 3 Series Gran Turismo hatch. But in response, we've got a car that might just be the best all-round package that BMW makes. Is it? Well, you're going to need the car and driving road test, the industry's most comprehensive video review, to find out. BMW claims the differences with this second generation 4 Series Grand Coupe are more than skin deep and will be equally evident in terms of drive dynamics. Well, we'll see. It's certainly hard to think of a better starting point for a car like this than BMW's 3 Series, which for this generation of models donates 48 volt mild hybrid tech for the four cylinder diesel and six cylinder petrol engine and clever lift-related dampers that reduce body movement and sharpen corner turn-in. But also much here has changed over a three, far more than was the case with the previous version of this car. The chassis has been extensively tweaked and there's a wider rear track that gives this G26 series design a 21mm lower centre of gravity than its more conservative showroom stablemate. 
And that's just the start. The body and suspension mountings are stiffer, and on standard suspension, this 4 Series rides 10mm lower than a 3. There are also firmer springs and anti-roll bars, plus this Grand Coupe gets a freshly developed double-jointed spring strut, front suspension and a 5-link rear axle. Otherwise, the basic winning Bavarian formula remains much the same. Rivals have long tried to copy the front-engine rear-wheel drive BMW layout with its near-perfect 50-50 weight distribution, but never quite managed to deliver a package with the same kind of involving finesse. Super effective traction and stability systems keep those back wheels in check, so that if you're not a driving enthusiast, it'll all feel quite normal. But if you are, then the feeling of being propelled up the road by the back wheels as you exit a bend rarely fails to offer up a great feeling of pleasure. That's assuming you've got the rear-driven setup and you haven't opted for the X-Drive four-wheel drive system we're trying here that the most powerful variant has to have. But even there, this keeps you rear-driven for most of the time. It helps that feedback from the tactile, pleasantly chunky three-spoke sports steering wheel is far better than you fear an electric steering system might offer. Weight through the helm building in a way that makes it easier to take every corner with just one fluid sweep of the wheel. Plus, all four series Grand Coupes now include BMW's variable sport steering, which is supposed to offer more response the more lock you apply. Personally, we think the advantages this feature adds to be slight, but they do complement the way that this car is so good at delivering more the more you ask from it. Just how much more depends upon a number of factors, the first of which is your selection of modes from the standard driving experience system, the rocker switch for which you'll find down here by the gear stick. As well as altering steering, throttle and the stability control software, these modes, Eco Pro, Comfort and Sport, Alter gear shift timings on every 4 Series Grand Coupe because every model must have the brand's 8-speed ZF Auto gearbox with its steering wheel paddle shifters. This transmission incorporates launch control for Grand Prix-style getaways. And provided you pay extra for a pricey optional M Sport Pro package or choose either top M Sport Pro Edition spec or this test car's M Performance trim level, it can include an extra sprint function that adds an extra burst of power for more rapid overtaking. On a four-cylinder 4 Series model, we'd recommend that you consider finding a bit of extra budget for the M adaptive suspension setup we think you'll ideally want in this car. This deals with what can be a slightly fidgety ride over poor surfaces from the standard passive M Sport suspension. Adaptive damping irons this out a bit, particularly in the driving experience system's comfort setting, and it gets you a fourth driving mode, a set-and-forget auto-style option badged adaptive. If your car has this, you'll probably end up selecting it nearly all the time, just as we've done. The advantage of doing that not only lies in your being relieved of the need to make decisions about driving setup, the computer software does that for you. It also lies in the way that predictive technology is introduced into the process, the system using the sat-nav to prime the car for upcoming hazards like sharp bends or junctions. It all works so smoothly that you're never really aware that so much is going on behind the scenes to make your journey smoother and more efficient. You're going to want to know about the engine range. and It might seem much the same as what was on offer with final versions of the previous F36 series model, but BMW insists that it isn't, especially when it comes to the 2.0-litre four-cylinder diesel and the 3.0-litre six-cylinder petrol unit. As mentioned earlier, these have been embellished with mild hybrid tech that uses a 48-volt starter generator providing for particularly intensive braking energy recuperation, along with an extra battery to store the electricity generated. The 48-volt battery not only supplies the electrically operated vehicle functions, but also makes its energy available to generate additional drive power. For this purpose, the current flows back to the starter generator to provide an 11-horsepower electric boost during acceleration, though that's difficult to sense in day-to-day -day driving. 
Otherwise, the engine range offered on conventional models has a familiar look. The mild hybrid 420D four-cylinder two-litre diesel variant we'd recommend gains sequential twin turbocharging for extra mid-range punch. This unit developing 190 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. Enough to see 62 miles an hour from rest flash by in just 7.3 seconds en route to 146 miles an hour if you're quick with the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. BMW's X-Drive four-wheel drive system is optional with this engine and with that setup fitted. The performance stats are 7.6 seconds and 145 miles an hour. Apart from that diesel unit, the rest of the 4 Series Grand Coupe range uses petrol power with almost all customers who don't choose the 420D ending up behind the wheel of the conventional rear drive only 420i model which offers 184 horsepower and makes 62 miles an hour from rest in 7.9 seconds on the way to 146 miles an hour. This model's two-litre four-cylinder power plant is lighter this time round and gains higher injection pressures, though you still have to rev it quite hard to assess its full performance, which is no hardship. The same engine is also offered in an uprated 258 horsepower state of tune in the alternative four-cylinder petrol model, the 430i, in which form the performance figures improved to 6.2 seconds and 155 miles an hour. For some 4 Series buyers though, only the distinctive whale of a straight six petrol power plant will do. If that's you, then check out the potent M440i model we're trying here, which features the 48 volt mild hybrid system we mentioned earlier. It gets X-Drive four-wheel drive as standard and uses basically the same 3 litre straight six twin turbo engine as BMW's M4 Coupe and convertible models but in a 374 horsepower state of tune, though that's still 48 horsepower more than the previous 440i and good enough to propel you to 62 miles an hour in just 4.7 seconds on the way to a top speed that has to be artificially limited at 155 miles an hour. The M440i gets a standard fit M Sport differential, which is also offered as an option on the 430i model. This feature can proactively distribute drive torque evenly to both rear wheels and compensate for the rotational speed difference between the inner and outer wheel as you power through each bend. Even without this kind of tech, you'll find that a volume four-cylinder model like this one will tackle the turns with infectious enthusiasm. Most pricier modern executive models feature torque vectoring systems of some kind these days, using electronic traction systems to vary drive torque between the driven wheels. But the BMW performance control setup is particularly effective. Or perhaps it just seems that way because you're always so clued into what's going on beneath this car's wheels. Reaction to this G26 series model steering actually hasn't been universally positive. Initially, it might seem very sharp and direct, but you would just quickly, and we've certainly had no issue with it. Unless, rather unrealistically, you expect this electrically assisted setup to have the kind of feel you'd have enjoyed in long forgotten days of hydraulic racks. You'll probably conclude, as we did, that the steering feedback on offer here is probably as good as you're going to get in a car of this kind. What all this boils down to is that the battle lines between this car and its closest Audi and Mercedes rivals, which to some extent have become somewhat indistinct, are now clear again once more. This G26 4 Series BMW has restored the clear blue sky that used to exist between this model line and its closest competitors in terms of dynamic drive response. And at the same time, it's now easily on a par with those rivals when it comes to things that were slightly lacking in the previous F36 generation 4 Series Grand Coupe model, principally in the areas of engine efficiency, safety standards, and cabin technology. Refinement's much improved too. You might not think that in a four-cylinder diesel model at start-up, but once on the move, whatever engine you choose, you'll find this car really very quiet indeed. In short, it's quite an achievement. If you like the looks and are shopping in this segment, we think you'll like much else about this car too.
If we accept that one of the primary purchasing priorities for potential buyers of this car is going to be the way it looks, then BMW seems very well set here. This second generation 4 Series Grand Coupe is wider, longer, taller and sleeker than before. But as with every Mark II 4 Series, when it comes to design, there's no doubt about the main talking point. The more vertical, upright kidney grille intended to reference classic BMWs like the pre-war 328 sports car. It's a move that's evoked a mixed reaction from brand loyalists, but as design chief Domagoj Duketch points out, until the 1980s, the grills on BMWs were always more vertical than horizontal. Arrow-shaped bonnet creases and headlamp contours with U-shaped fibre optic light guides zero in on this feature, which has to rather awkwardly incorporate this centrally mounted number plate and is framed by three-dimensional surfacing. At the outer edges of the front apron, next to the slim LED fog lights, the vertically designed intakes for the air curtains are supposed to accentuate the width of the car. Another frontal aspect that's something of an acquired taste. In profile, a previous owner might appreciate the increase in size of this second generation G26 era model. It's 143 millimetres longer, 27 millimetres wider and 53 millimetres taller than its predecessor, which makes it a bit bigger in every direction than an equivalent 3 Series saloon. There are big wheels of between 18 and 20 inches in size. We've got 20 inches here and smoothly sculpted surfaces structured by crisp lines deliver the required dose of elegance. Plus, the flush fitting door handles, unique at launch to this Grand Coupe 4 series body shape, have a streamlined design. The gently stretched extended roof silhouette further back flows gracefully into the slightly raised and short rear section of the car. So let's take a look at that and note how the falling roof line ends with this pronounced spoiler lip on the tailgate. Horizontal lines accentuating the car's width are the dominant theme back here, an effect reinforced by both the slim, darkened, full LED rear lights, which extend well into the flanks, and the vertical aero lips at the rear apron's outer edges. That apron's dark finish helps with the low-slung, powerful stance, and under the skin, the CLAR mixed steel and alloy platform that underpinned the previous version of this car is retained with its intelligence mix of steels and alloys. But BMW has tried to reduce its weight through greater use of aluminium, which is used to fashion the bonnet, the side panels and the doors. Time to take a look inside with cabin access possible via your smartphone if you've specified the digital key option and have the right kind of handset. Now pull back the frameless door and the shallow windows, click down, out of their fittings, welcoming you into a cabin that BMW promises will bring some of the grand touring luxury of its big 8 Series Grand Coupe into this more affordable segment. It's certainly very nice indeed, and a good deal more sophisticated than that of the previous generation model, though not as deliberately understated. As before, there's a sportier vibe than you'd expect in a car of this kind. The high centre console and the flowing surface structure running from the instrument panel into the door cards, generating a cocooning feel in the front seats. Plus, the flush fitting control unit in the front section of the roof and the new arrangement of displays optimise impression of space. Headroom in particular is much improved and little touches like contrast stitching and blue strip lighting in the doors and across the dash deliver a high-end feel. Otherwise, the front of the cabin is exactly as it would be in a 3 or any other 4 series, which means there's a bit more silver trimming this time round to highlight the hexagon-shaped detailing that distinguishes BMW's current approach to interior design. The outer edges of the high-set centre console have knee pads to cater for a sporty driving style, and everything's now a little more canted towards the driver. The start button's been repositioned next to the restyled bespoke auto gear stick, and the steering wheel now befits the ambience of the slightly larger, more luxurious Grand Coupe this car has become. 
There's no respite inside here, though, from the divisive look of that front grille. If you don't happen to like it, a striking image of this appendage appearing on the centre screen when you alter the various individual drivetrain settings. Ah, yes, screens. It's these displays, standard as part of BMW's live cockpit professional package, that you'll probably notice first once you've got comfortable in this car. A 12.3-inch monitor replaces the previous model's analogue dials in the instrument cluster, and a bigger 10.25-inch centre-dash iDrive infotainment display is now much better integrated into the centre of the fascia. That instrument binnacle screen offers five customisable viewing options, though none of them provides a central pairing of circular dials that could be read simply at a glance. And one layout lacks a rev counter, which seems a bit heretical on a BMW. The graphics are classy, of course, it's just that some aspects of this setup's functionality still need a little more thought back in Munich. For instance, the virtual speedometer and rev counter gauges that symmetrically frame its display use opposite swinging needles that, to start with, can be visually confusing. And though you get sat-nav mapping in the centre of this monitor, you can't expand the 3D navigation layout to completely fill it, as is possible with, say, Audi's virtual cockpit layout. We've no issues with this centre stack screen, though, which showcases the fact that BMW has matched and in some cases exceeded the current media connectivity class standard here. This advanced infotainment package includes what the brand calls an intelligent personal assistant. This is a supposed font of all knowledge that responds to voice questions prefaced by Hey BMW, much as would Siri on an Apple phone or the Google Assistant feature on an Android handset, or indeed the Amazon Alexa system. You can also link into this screen via the My BMW app. The intelligent personal assistant is certainly very clever. You can give it a name if you think it'll help you bond with it better. And the press kit tells us we can even ask it the meaning of life. It's more likely, of course, that you'll be using it to make day-to-day -day driving just that little bit easier. If you tell it you're cold, it'll turn up the temperature. If you don't understand a particular feature, it'll trot out explanatory text from the online handbook. Or you might want it to check your oil level, look for fuel stations along your route, or read out your messages. This lower iDrive controller still sets the class standard for infotainment functionality. For instance, it takes just a couple of nudges with it to set up just how much steering intervention you want out of the safety systems, or whether you want that at all, and the system will then remember your preference. Plus, if you're graduating on from the previous F36 Generation 4 Series Grand Coupe model, you'll be pleased to find that both the top of this capstan controller and the screen surface are now touch-sensitive as standard. In an age where many rivals are dispensing with audio volume control knobs, we were pleased to find one retained here. You'll quickly get to grips with the calm, measured graphics of this operating system, 7.0 Monitor 2. The layout is clear and logical, a sidebar menu giving you media, communication, navigation, car and apps options that are also duplicated by buttons next to the iDrive controller. These shortcut options connect you into features like the DAB audio system, 4G LTE connectivity, connected sat-nav and Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring, all of its standard fare. There's an awful lot of connected drive digital stuff too. A wide range of BMW vehicle apps, for instance, that give you access to things like news reports and weather forecasts, and a concierge service that connects you through to an operator to help with journeying info. Plus, the system can remotely update its own software. There's also what BMW calls an open mobility cloud that, via a clever My BMW app, can allow you to interact with a car when you're not in it. For instance, allowing you to remotely view it in 3D. There are caveats here, though. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring functionality is now standard without limit, and not before time, though you have to pay extra for wireless functionality. But many of this Munich maker's digital services remain life-limited before becoming chargeable, some for three years, and others, like BMW Music, which brings your favourite soundtracks into your car, and Microsoft Office 365, which syncs in your emails and your calendar, for just three months. To some extent, you can't help feeling that it's a case of the brand giving with one hand and taking away with the other. 
Are there other issues? Well, not many. We don't think it's acceptable to have to pay extra for lumbar support on a car of this price. Plus, frontward visibility is a little compromised by these wide A-pillars. And as usual, on any car claiming to be some kind of coupe, over-the-shoulder view is slightly restricted thanks to chunky rear pillars. Though this issue is mitigated somewhat by a whole bank of technology that'll help you slot into spaces, all-round parking sensors, a rear-view camera and a parking assistant to steer you into tight bays are all standard, as is a reversing assistant that activates with green or red strips on the steering wheel spokes and automatically reverses you along whatever path you'd previously taken forward. You can even add the optional drive recorder package we have here, which uses the various driver assistance cameras around the car to record and store video footage from different points around the vehicle. So, if you ever should have an impact, you'll be able to instantly watch it back and inwardly cringe. This well-specified test car has much more, of course. A Harman Kardon loudspeaker system audio upgrade, a head-up display, now with a 70% larger projection area, and gesture control feature for the infotainment screen, though the functionality of that tends to be rather hit and miss. There's even a selectable caring car feature on the centre infotainment screen that uses music, lighting and the climate control in a three minute long session that will either vitalise or relax you. Yes, it's a gimmick. Yes, you'll be pleased to have it after the kind of long day at the office that made it possible for you to run a new 4 Series in the first place. Getting comfortable is easy thanks to loads of adjustment for seat and wheel. The amount of rearward seat travel you get is particularly generous. And build quality from the Munich plant is predictably faultless, as suggested earlier. It all feels very high-end, helped by plenty of piano black trim and nice little touches like this contrast stitching on the binnacle cowl, the centre console and the door cards. When it comes to cabin practicality, BMW achieves the required class standard, but no more. Both the door bins and the glove box are compartmentalised and averagely sized with bottle holders. This lidded area at the base of the centre stack reveals a couple of cup holders, along with a 12-volt port and a USB-A point. Plus, there's a wireless phone charging mat. A USB-C point can be found in this good-sized, nicely lit lidded box between the seats. An overhead sunglasses compartment is missing, but you get a flock-lined cubby by the driver's right knee and ticket clips on the sun visors. And in the rear, well, how easy will it be for your gran to get into a grand coupe? Well, earlier we mentioned this second generation model's enhancements in length, width and height. But even more significant is the 46 millimetre lengthier wheelbase. That's five millimetres longer than a three series saloon. So there should be more space on offer back here. Now let's enter through this lovely frameless door and see whether those stats translate into reality. Well, it's certainly an improvement on the first generation model and on a rival like Peugeot's 508 Fastback, but it's way off the spaciousness you'd find in a comparable Volkswagen Arteon. For most owners, the main thing will be provision this time round of three full-size seats. The back seat of the previous model was really only designed for two. With the two outer positions, there's a standard of head and leg room that are both remarkably good for a car professing to be any kind of coupe, with knee space aided by these recessed seat backs. You wouldn't want to be stuck for very long in this middle pew though, which is severely impeded by this very high transmission tunnel. And the relatively high waistline would make it slightly claustrophobic back here, were it not for these rear quarter light windows. Storage space is at a bit of a premium, though there are decently sized door bins with bottle holders and occupants are favoured with climate controls and individual vents with twin USB-C ports just below. Isofix attachments situated at the outer edges of these rear seats, meanwhile, make it easier to fit child seats in place than it was before. And you get the centre armrest that's lacking in the two-door version of this model, including these pop-out cup holders. Plus, there are overhead reading lights and coat hooks in the grab handles. Finally, let's take a look in the boot, accessed via this standard power opening tailgate. 
You have the option to specify a comfort access feature that allows you to open the trunk lid by swiping your foot underneath the bumper if, key in pocket, you approach the car laden down with bags. Once the hatch is open, separating the two-part parcel shelf, it reveals a large but shallow space you have to access via quite a high loading lip. There's 470 litres of space on offer, 39 litres more than the previous generation model could provide, and 5 litres more than a competing Audi A5 Sportback. You might be surprised, though, to learn that this figure is still 10 litres less than you'd get in the boot of the slightly smaller 3 Series saloon, though the hatch format here does, of course, make this Grand Coupe a more practical proposition. Unless you've got dogs, of course, the sloping tailgate will make them feel somewhat claustrophobic, in which case a 3 Series touring estate, which has 500 litres of space, would be a better bet. The boot is smartly trimmed with a lining fashioned from natural fibres, but there's no underfloor space, so no spare wheel, and the floor level gets higher as you move towards the rear seat backs. There are four tie-down points, along with bright illumination and a bag hook on the right, plus the extra cost extended storage package gives you these useful nets for the cargo sidewalls and a 12-volt socket. If you need room for lengthier items, a flexible 40-20-40 split folding rear backrest is provided as standard, which means you can push longer things like skis in between two rear seated folk. If you require even more space and want to fold the entire rear bench, you'll be irritated to find that there are no cargo sidewall catches, so you have to go around to the side door and release the catches on top of the seat shoulders at which point you find that the rear chairs don't fold completely flat. In this position, though, 1,290 litres of space is freed up, which should be ample for most owners. BMW's decision to restrict trim levels this time round to M Sport variants and standardised auto transmission an eight-speed Steptronic box with launch control has meant that the entry point for four series Grand Coupe ownership has risen quite a lot. When we first tested the previous F36 series design back in 2014, this model line priced from around £30,000. But from the launch of this second generation G26 series Mark II model in the autumn of 2021, just under £42,000 became the sum necessary to get a place on the lowest rung of the ownership ladder, the mainstream range rising in price up to around £55,000. Even if you compare like with like, M Sport trim, old and new, that's still quite a price hike. Though to be fair to BMW, this only reflects the kinds of figures that direct competitors are charging, as we'll see in a moment. Unlike with the two-door coupe and convertible versions of the 4 Series, there's no M4 competition variant at the top of the range, but much the same engine and drivetrain package could be had at a substantial saving if you opt for the flagship M440i X-Drive model we're trying here, which wears the £55,000 price tag and presents the M4's 3-litre twin-turbo 6 in more accessible 374 horsepower form. It's more likely, though, of course, that you'll be perusing one of the humbler variants, all offered with a choice of either base M Sport trim or for around £5,000 more with the Ritzia M Sport Pro Edition package. Engine-wise, quite possibly, you'll have settled upon one of the two rear-driven 2-litre petrol derivatives, either the entry-level 4-cylinder 420i, 184 horsepower model, or the more potent 258 horsepower 430i variant. The only other option is a diesel. Yes, BMW still offers one in this car, the brand's familiar 190 horsepower 2-litre twin-turbo unit, which commands a £2,500 price premium over the petrol 420i, but has the advantage that, unlike the four-cylinder petrol models, it can be ordered with optional X-Drive four-wheel drive for £1,500 more. 
The pricing here is a bit of a step up from that required for equivalent versions of BMW 3 Series. Comparable versions of the 3 Series saloon will save you around £4,000. But a more relevant comparison is with the 3 Series Touring Estate, where the difference is more like around £2,500. Talking of premiums, we ought to point out that the same engineering and design package is available in two-door coupe form. That 4 Series Coupe costs around £1,200 less. For reference, we'll also tell you that the all-electric model that BMW offers in this segment, the i4, costs between £52,000 and £55,000 in the 335 horsepower eDrive 40 form that was the entry point to the i4 range at the time of this test. In terms of competition from other brands, this 5-door 4 Series Grand Coupe model really has only one really direct rival, the Audi A5 Sportback. That Audi comes with cheaper trim levels and lower powered engines at prices starting from around £39,000. But if you compare like with like, i.e. the 420i and 420d M Sport versions of this BMW against the only fractionally more powerful 40 TFSI and 40 TDI S-Line versions of the Audi, then this Grand Coupe will, or would at the time of this test in early 2022, save you just under £1,000 over a petrol A5 Sportback and around £2,000 over a diesel one. Remember too that two-wheel drive versions of the A5 Sportback are front-driven, so it won't be quite as involving to drive as their rear-driven 4 Series Grand Coupe counterparts. We still think, though, that the A5 is a better match for this BMW than anything else you might see as comparable in this segment. The Volkswagen Arteon shares this Grand Coupe's five-door format, is much bigger inside and would save you around £2,000 in comparable R-line trim, but it's much heavier and clunkier to drive. You might be more tempted by a Mercedes. We'd pick out two. Either Merck's CLA Shooting Brake, a stylized estate that saves you around £5,000 over this Grand Coupe, but is slightly smaller, or the Mercedes C-Class estate, which in comparable form would save you around £3,000. Other alternatives you might read about are more niche. There's the Genesis G70 shooting brake, which would cost around the same as this BMW in comparable top Sportline form, but that's more of an estate. Peugeot's 508 Fastback might seem at first glance a closer match, sharing the same kind of body style as this BMW, but most of the engines offered in a 508 are far less powerful. The only exception is the 360 horsepower unit used in the top Peugeot Sport engineered 508 variant. And that car costs nearly as much as this M440i xDrive model. Though that flagship 508 does have the added advantage of plug-in hybrid tech. A better rival for this M440i is found in Kia's Stinger, these days only offered in top V6 turbo form. That Korean car would save you around £12,000 over an M440i Grand Coupe. All of which means that if you really want a car in this segment, you might very well end up really wanting a 4 Series Grand Coupe. In which case, you're going to want to know what your money will be buying you in terms of standard equipment. So let's see. The base M Sport model comes with 18-inch M aerodynamic midnight grey alloy wheels and an M rear spoiler, plus high-gloss shadow line exterior trim. The most important benefits of the M Sport upgrade, though, are felt inside, where there's a Vanaska leather upholstery in a choice of five colours, an anthracite headliner, aluminium tetragon inlays, an instrument panel in stitched Sensatec man-made leather, and the thick M Sport steering wheel that BMW folks seem to like so much. There's also passive M Sport suspension, a little firm, so try before you buy, and a variable sport steering system that would cost extra on an equivalent 3 Series and which is supposed to offer more response the more lock you apply. Plus, of course, as you'd expect for the money being asked here, you get a full roster of luxury segment features. Full LED headlamps, acoustic glazing, ambient lighting, 40-20-40 split folding rear seat backs, and three-zone climate control. There's lots of help for slotting this car into tight bays too. Not only all-round sensors and a reversing camera, 
but also a parking assistant that automatically steers you into parallel or perpendicular spaces. And a reversing assistant that when you return after parking up can automatically reverse you along whatever path you've previously taken forward. In addition, pretty much all the stuff you'd expect from a premium executive model of this price is present and correct too. So, tick off auto headlamps and wipers, power folding heated mirrors, an alarm and LED illumination for the tail lamps and front fog lights, along with cruise control, an anti-dazzle rear view mirror and the usual BMW driving experience driving mode set up with its Comfort, Eco Pro and Sport settings. BMW has additionally standardised its lovely welcome light carpet that illuminates the ground around the front doors when you get into the car or step out of it at night. Annoyingly though, a space saver spare wheel isn't available and run flat tyres can't be had either. Perhaps the most significant element of M Sport trim is the brand's sophisticated BMW Live Cockpit Professional arrangement. That gives you a large 10.25-inch centre dash screen and a further, even bigger 12.3-inch control display to replace conventional dials in the instrument cluster. Also included is what BMW calls an intelligent personal assistant, which works a bit like the Siri or Google Assistant systems you might use on your phone and is there to answer questions you can voice to the car as you drive it. This can learn your routines and adapt the car accordingly. For instance, opening the driver's window as you approach barriers and toll booths along your usual morning commuting route. Neat. Plus, of course, the centre dash screen features over-the-air updates, 4G LTE connectivity, Bluetooth and a high-quality DAB audio system. In the case of base M Sport trim, a 100-watt six-speaker setup. In addition, the brand now, at last, offers the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration system as standard, without time limit, so you can easily use your favourite apps in the car. Of course, there's also standard navigation. This a much-improved BMW Maps 3D cloud-based setup with a simplified destination entry interface and a connected parking feature which assists you when searching for a space once you've arrived at a navigated destination. As brand loyalists would expect, this second generation 4 Series model includes plenty of the brand's really clever digital connectivity features too, including the full suite of BMW connected package professional services, things like real-time traffic information, which warns you of congestion along your chosen route, and connected parking, which offers multi-storey and on-street parking information in selected cities in the UK and Europe. There's also BMW's concierge service, which, at the press of a button, will give you direct access to an operator who will be able to answer almost any question about your journey as you drive. And the Connected Package Professional package now also includes connected music, which offers unlimited streaming of millions of songs in the vehicle from Spotify. In-car experiences are one-shot cabin modes able to instantly adapt to the interior ambience to suit your mood. Plus, there's the company's suite of BMW vehicle apps that give you access to things like news reports, weather forecasts for up to four days ahead, and information on highway tolls. In addition, the system can remotely update itself with fresh features and mapping upgrades. And, of course, it will read out text messages to you. We'll also mention teleservices, which can decide when a garage visit is required and automatically book it. And as a customer of this Munich maker, you get a three-month trial of a connected teaser package that gives you BMW Music, which allows you to export your favourite soundtracks into your car. If you've owned a BMW before, you might be familiar with the standard remote services package that allows you to control many aspects of your vehicle's operation via your smartphone. And you'll maybe also recognise the downloadable My BMW app, which can learn your mobility routines, read your calendar, and even prompt you as to when to leave for scheduled journeys. 
It'll get familiar with your most frequently travelled routes and memorise them as future destinations. Plus, the app will help you to find your car if you've forgotten where you've parked it and can remotely lock or unlock the doors. Through the My BMW app, you can also install Amazon Alexa, enabling you to use Amazon's voice assistant just as you might already do at home. All of this is included with standard M Sport trim, but if you're not able to stretch to this potent M performance variant and stick with this base spec level, we think you really ought to think carefully about finding an extra £2,500 to get yourself the optional M Sport Pro pack that adds in some key extra features we think you'll really want on this car. In our view, the most important of these is M Adaptive Suspension, which works through the various driving experience drive modes, adds an extra one, adaptive, and particularly with the comfort setting selected, allows you to take the firm edge off this car's ride demeanor over poorer surfaces. Other pack elements you'll appreciate include the sprint mode, which gives you a quick extra burst of power for sharp overtakes, greater stopping power from the M Sport braking system, showcased by blue calipers, a throatier engine note from the enhanced active sound design pack, and larger 19-inch bicolour painted M Y-spoke alloy wheels. Plus, the M Sport Pro package also includes M seat belts, sun protection glass, and a wider range of the brand's individual high-gloss Shadowline exterior trim elements. With the 430i variant, the M Sport Pro package gives you the brand's M Sport differential too, which shunts torque across the back axles between the rear wheels for greater cornering traction. So, that's optional packs probably worth having. We think there's much less of an argument for finding £5,000 over the cost of an M Sport trimmed mainstream 4 Series Grand Coupe and upgrading to the top M Sport Pro Edition level of trim your dealer will probably want to tell you about. With that top spec, you get all the features of the M Sport Pro package we've just mentioned. Plus, your 4 Series Grand Coupe will come finished in a more exclusive BMW individual exterior metallic paint shade. Either Dravit Grey, Tanzanite Blue or Aventurin Red. These colours complementing the black finish for the door mirror caps and the rear spoiler that aims to further set the M Sport Pro Edition models apart. Red brake calipers also feature. The 4 Series Grand Coupe range culminates with this desirable M Performance M440i xDrive model. For the spec here, think in terms of what you'd get with the M Sport Pro Edition package, plus a few extra nice-to-have details, namely the standardisation of the M Sport differential, plus free-form exhaust tailpipe finishers and a cooler cerium grey finish for the air breathers. The kidney grille, the mirror caps and the model designation badge work. You get a specific cockpit design too. Our focus here though is on more mainstream 4 Series Grand Coupe models. If you're looking at one of these and want to embellish things with a few well chosen extras, what will your dealer be able to offer to tempt you? Well, let's kick off our pack perusal with the visibility pack we have here, which for £1,500 more includes a high beam assistant that will automatically dip your headlights at night. Plus, you also get BMW's piercing blue themed laser lights, which give a beam range of 600 metres. If you're tempted by that, then you'll probably also want to look at the optional technology pack, which for around £1,900 more gets you a head-up display, gesture control for the infotainment system, enhanced Bluetooth with wireless charging, an upgraded 16-speaker Harman Kardon loudspeaker audio system and in-car Wi-Fi that offers a high-speed LTE internet connection for up to 10 devices. The Alternative Technology Plus pack we have here gets you all of the technology pack features along with the full contents of the Driving Assistant Professional Camera Safety Package. We'll cover that off for you when we get on to talking about safety. Otherwise, the Technology Plus package is all about parking. It includes BMW's Park Assistant Plus, Remote 3D View, Surround View camera system, the cameras for which are also employed in another clever feature, the brand's Drive Recorder. This is like a dash cam, except a lot more sophisticated. The Drive Recorder system uses inbuilt cameras to record video footage from different points around the vehicle. 
before storing the event and crash recordings so they can be either watched later on the control display or exported via the USB port. Recordings can be up to 40 seconds in length. For accident playback, you get 20 seconds before the impact and the 20 seconds after it. If luxury is more your focus than technology, there's a comfort pack that for around a thousand pounds more gives you steering wheel heating, comfort access, keyless entry, including locking and unlocking access via a phone app and gesture controlled operation for the powered tailgate. The comfort pack also gives you BMW's extended storage pack, which gives you some extra storage features, a cargo bay net, seat back nets, bag hooks, an extra 12 volt socket in the boot and so on. The Enhanced Comfort Plus Pack we have here has all those Comfort Pack features plus lumbar support and powered adjustment for the front seats. If you like some of the features just mentioned but you don't want to stretch to one of those pricey packs then you'll find that a number of them can be ordered individually if your 4 Series Grand Coupe doesn't already have them including the M Sport braking system, the Iconic Sounds Sport engine note enhancement, the Parking Assistant Plus surround view camera system and the Drive Recorder. You can also place an individual order for sun protection glass, in-car Wi-Fi and enhanced Bluetooth. Two audio upgrades are available, the 205 watt 10 speaker hi-fi system and the 16 speaker Harman Kardon surround sound setup we mentioned earlier. We've been trying it here. It has a digital seven channel amplifier and delivers 464 watts of audio power. You might also want to look at the optional glass sliding or tilting sunroof that has a transparent surface that stretches back 102 millimeters further than in the previous generation model. Earlier, we mentioned that the infotainment system now features over the air updates. This means that various optional items can be retrofitted to your car if, after a period of ownership, you decide you'd like them. Amongst these are the high beam assistant, the drive recorder and the active sound design package. OK, on to aesthetic upgrades, which include the M carbon exterior package, which trims the air breathers, the mirror caps, the rear diffuser and the rear spoiler in carbon fibre. And beyond that, well, bear in mind that unless you want your 4 Series Grand Coupe in the only solid colour available, Alpine White, you'll need to be paying your dealer more for one of the offered metallic shades. We've got Brooklyn Grey here. If you specified the M Sport braking system, you can change the blue calipers for high gloss red ones. And with M Sport trim, you can opt for 19 inch wheel upgrades too. And with all trim levels, a set of 20 inch rims are available as an option for those who keep their chiropractor on speed dial. We've got those here. Other M performance parts options include carbon fiber front grills, front splitters and side skirt attachments, plus aero flicks for the front apron in high gloss black. If you want to upgrade the cabin, you can do so by adding in piano black trim and or aluminium mesh effect, or as in this case, carbon fibre inlays. Avoid base M Sport trim, and there's also the option of softer, extended merino leather upholstery. As for practical options, well, we'd want the luggage compartment mat and possibly the all-weather floor mats for muddier months. You might also like to add a tow bar that would enable you to add a rear bike carrier. And roof bars are available which will enable you to add the optional black roof box. BMW additionally offers an advanced car eye dash cam, and as usual, it'll also be wise to include BMW's optional Trackstar stolen vehicle tracking system. OK, enough with standard kit and options. Let's go on to consider safety provision, potentially aided by around 40 automated assistance functions. BMW wants to assure us that this G26 series design is intrinsically very safe, thanks to a comprehensive passive safety concept that features a super stiff passenger cell and highly resilient supporting structures. It also includes integrated safety electronics that deploy the restraint systems in the right sequence at the optimum moment and with the required effect for the type and severity of any collision. Of course, there are the usual twin front and side airbags too, plus a driver's knee bag. 
as you'd expect. There are front and rear ISOFIX child seat fastenings and the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control. Primarily DSC Plus stability control and DTC traction control. There's a trailer stabilisation function that'll stop trailer sway if you have a trailer fitted and hill start assistant to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. There's plenty of braking peace of mind too with the ABS system supplemented by fading compensation, CBC or cornering brake control and a neat brake drying system that keeps the brake discs free of moisture in wet weather. Panic stops are aided by a brake assist system and advertised to following motorists by dynamic brake lights that flash a bright warning. You also get an active bonnet to minimise injuries in the nightmare scenario of a pedestrian collision and a multi-collision braking function that in the event of an impact with a solid object or another vehicle will keep brake pressure applied until you come to a complete stop. Tyre pressure monitoring is standard too. Another neat safety feature fitted as standard across the range is the attentiveness assistant that monitors you for signs of drowsiness. We'll also highlight the standard BMW emergency call with tele-services system, which in an accident can automatically alert the emergency services. This system not only gives them your exact GPS location, but also provides recovery personnel with information on your speed at point of impact, how hard the seat belts were pulled, how many airbags burst and so on. If you were to have a crash, it would all mean not only that the emergency teams would know exactly where you were, but also that they would arrive on the scene more prepared and ready to get you to safety than they could ever otherwise be. A potentially life-saving difference. The setup's now been further improved to also automatically activate after low-speed collisions below the threshold for airbag deployment. Immediately after the impact, flashing up an iDrive screen message offering to contact BMW's accident assistant service directly. We should further mention that to meet current customer expectations, a full range of camera-driven safety features is included which was long overdue for this model as recently as 2017 with the updated version of the previous F36 generation version of this car. BMW didn't offer any kind of autonomous braking system as standard on this 4 Series Grand Coupe, the sort of thing we've long had as standard on many family runabouts. This time round, BMW Group, its main camera-driven safety features in the Active Guard Plus Intelligent Safety Package familiar from other models, the key element of which, as you might expect, is autonomous braking, or, as the Munich maker calls it, front collision warning with city braking. This system works as these kinds of setups usually do. At over 30 miles an hour, the vehicle scans the road ahead for potential accident hazards, and if one's detected, you'll be warned and the brakes preconditioned for maximum effectiveness. Should you be travelling at under 30 miles an hour and be not responding to a detected hazard, the brakes will automatically be applied, reducing the severity of any resulting accident and hopefully alleviating it altogether. There are two other standard Active Guard Plus features. Lane departure warning with steering impulse alerts you if you cross lane delineating lines. And speed limit information pictures road signs you pass and displays them on the dash. If you want more in terms of camera-driven safety tech, you're going to have to stump up for the extra cost. Driving assistant professional pack we've got here that has to be had as part of the Technology Plus package we mentioned earlier. Which means that this enhanced safety pack isn't cheap. A whacking £3,650 more at the time of this car's launch. Still, it does include the choiciest parts of BMW's safety camera and autonomous driving technology, as you're about to hear. The autonomous driving part of the Driving Assistant Professional Pack lies primarily with two elements. There's active cruise control with approach control there to regulate your distance to the vehicle in front and able, if necessary, to even slow you right down to a stop and start you off again. It incorporates a radar-based approach control function. 
that senses other traffic around you and can adapt throttle and brakes accordingly. And it can adjust your speed to the prevailing limit. But the real highlight of this optional driving assistant professional pack is BMW's now improved steering and lane control assistant, which takes its bearings from road markings and vehicles driving ahead through using data from a trifocal camera and a front range radar, enabling it to work with the driver to help centre the car in the detected lane with corrective steering input. The setup can make corrective steering interventions at speeds of up to 130 miles an hour that you still have to keep your hands on the wheel at all times. We found that it works particularly well in heavy traffic, especially now that it's been updated to include the brand's latest active navigation tech. This system uses navigation data to spot in advance when a lane change will be required. In preparation, the system will automatically adjust the car's speed to make it easier to steer into a suitable gap in the adjacent lane. We mentioned that this driving assistant professional pack also includes a whole suite of BMW's latest camera safety tech. So let's brief you on that. There's active lane guidance, which adds subtle steering lock to ease you back to where you ought to be if the lane departure warning system we mentioned earlier detects that you've inadvertently veered over carriage lane delineating lines. In addition, as part of this extra cost pack, you also get BMW's Lane Keeping Assistant with Active Side Collision Protection Package, which incorporates side collision warning and lane change warning, all of which stops you from pulling out when there's a vehicle in your blind spot and adds in light steering intervention that will ease you back to where you ought to be on the road should you drift offline. We also like the pack's Crossing Traffic Warning Front feature, which alerts you to oncoming vehicles if you're trying to edge out of a junction and can't completely see traffic coming at you from either side. There's also automatic speed limit assist, which works with the traffic sign recognition system to recognise speed limits and prevent you from exceeding them. And you get rear collision prevention and rear crossing traffic warning systems, both there to reduce the danger of a collision when reversing out into roads with poor visibility. And we haven't finished yet either. The driving assistant professional pack also includes an evasion aid that gives you extra steering assistance in critical situations where it's still possible to avoid an accident. Say, for example, someone suddenly pulls out in front of you or you suddenly have to make a dramatic lane change to avoid slow moving traffic. Plus, there's crossroads warning incorporating give way warning which alerts you to traffic coming at you from the sides at a crossroads. And finally, as the name suggests, wrong way warning. Makes a huge fuss if you forget yourself and end up going the wrong way down a one-way street. It's all very reassuring. For all the talk of big horsepower, muscular styling and clever tech, perhaps the most impressive thing about this 4 Series Grand Coupe is its cost effectiveness. For some reason, you don't expect a car with class-leading drive dynamics to be also class-leading in terms of running cost and efficiency. But this one delivers just that, which is just as well because the business buyers who primarily populate this sector are notoriously unforgiving of cars that slip below standard in this area. You can love the way this Munich model carves its way through your favourite back doubles all you like, but if it doesn't stack up on the balance sheet, you're unlikely to get the nod from accounts that'll enable you to run one. Anyway, for the time being, it does, in CO2 terms anyway, which for a company user is the most important factor. The claimed 55 kilo weight saving that's been achieved this time round certainly helps here, though it's worth pointing out that a rival second generation Audi A5 Sportback, a design that's been on sale since 2017, remains around 45 kilos lighter still. But of course, a good efficiency showing is more than just light weight. Probably the key improvement with this Mark II G26 era 4 Series Grand Coupe has been the extension across the range of the Bavarian brand's hybrid technology. 48 volt mild hybrid technology in this case. The company has its PHEV plug-in tech ready and waiting, 
But at the time of this test, in early 2022, hadn't yet made it available to 4 Series Grand Coupe customers, though we're expecting it probably will. Anyway, the much less effective 48-volt mild hybrid tech you can have features on 420D diesel variants and this M440i xDrive petrol model and works as mild hybrid systems these days usually do. Fitting a powerful 48-volt starter generator and a tiny second battery enables a significant increase in the amount of brake energy that can be regenerated and stored. This energy is used not just to supply the electrical system, but also to lighten the combustion engine's workload and boost its power. The starter generator also increases efficiency by assisting the engine when driving at constant speeds. As a result of all that, here are the WLTP rated stats that'll get the approval of your accountant or company fleet manager. Best possible figures quoted based on M Sport trimmed models with the smallest available 18 inch wheel size. The bigger 19 or 20 inch rims you may well want will obviously impact these stats a little. Anyway, we'll start with the rear driven mild hybrid 420D diesel variant, which in this second generation form features sequential multi-stage turbocharging and remains a popular derivative in the lineup, primarily because it can deliver up to 58.9 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 126 grams per kilometre of CO2. That means benefit in kind tax rated in the 30 to 31% range. These are stats good enough to shade the returns possible with this car's closest rival, the Audi A5 Sportback 40 TDI S-Tronic, which manages bests of 50.4 mpg and 146 grams per kilometer. Inevitably, adding the extra weight of the brand's X-Drive four-wheel drive system impacts the 420D's readings a little to bests of 55.4 mpg and 133 grams per kilometer. The 4 Series Grand Coupe 420D uses BMW's Blue Performance technology that includes a particulate filter, an oxidation catalyst, an NOx absorption catalyst and an SCR catalyst with AdBlue injection. You'll probably be familiar with AdBlue by now because most modern Euro 6 diesel power plants use it. It's a urea additive that mixes with the hot exhaust gases from the engine. As the urea combines with these fumes, it turns many of the harmful chemicals into nothing more noxious than water and nitrogen. And that's what makes up most of the Earth's atmosphere. Tell all that to barstool experts who talk as if diesel cars are alone responsible for smogging up our cities. These people will certainly point you to petrol power and given the current zeitgeist and government tax and disincentives to fuel from the black pump, you'll certainly want to consider it if the running cost difference wasn't too great. Is that the case? Well, you decide. The base 420i petrol model does without the 48 volt tech, but still manages up to 42.8 mpg and up to 150 grams per kilometre, so benefit in kind tax rated in the 34 to 36% range. These are readings that fall only slightly with the 430i variant that uses a 258 horsepower version of this derivative same 2 litre petrol engine. With the 430i you're looking at up to 41.5 mpg and up to 156 grams per kilometre of CO2. Either way, drive a bit harder as we've been doing and you're probably looking at a day-to-day -day return of around 30 mpg. For the six-cylinder M440i X-Drive mild hybrid model we're trying here, the fuel figure is rated at up to 35.3 mpg, but the CO2 reading falls sharply to 181 grams per kilometer. All the figures we've just quoted for all the available engines assume that the car is being run in the driving experience system's most frugal Eco Pro mode. In this setting, the air conditioning and power steering only work when required to save energy, and what's called a proactive driving assistant is activated. Whatever kind of 4 Series Grand Coupe power plant you choose, it'll benefit from the Munich makers' various efficient dynamics technologies, there to keep running costs in check. There's an engine auto stop-start system, as you would expect, and at highway speeds, the cruise control can seamlessly decouple the engine from the transmission to reduce friction and consequently save fuel. 
the brand has also put a great deal of effort into aerodynamics and given this G26 series design, a redesigned active air flap system in the front grille. Plus, an almost completely sealed underbody to work with front air curtain slits that channel air more smoothly over the aerodynamically optimised wheels. The result is a marginal drag coefficient gain which improves to 0.26 CD this time round, 0.02 CD better than before. Of course, the driver will also need to do their part and you'll want to keep an eye on how frugal your recent mileage has been. A journey data part of the Centre Dash infotainment screen's driving information section shows a useful fuel graph to brief you on that. The same section also has an energy flow graphic showing you at any time what's being powered by what. And there's a driving style analysis screen that when the Eco Pro mode is activated, rates your driving with marks out of five for anticipation and acceleration and works out the extra mileage range that any more frugal driving has gained you. What else? Well, in the vehicle status section of the centre dash screen, there's a general check control that allows you to monitor the status of various vehicle functions. Plus, there are separate screens that allow you to specifically oversee things like tyre pressure and the current levels of engine oil and, on a diesel model, the AdBlue additive. You can check on service requirements too and you can use a clever tele-services feature that comes as part of the BMW Connected Drive services you can also access through the iDrive infotainment system. Via this, before each service appointment is due, your 4 Series can automatically put in a tele-services call to your nominated BMW service centre, complete with detailed information on vehicle condition. You'll then get a call to arrange a service appointment, something you'll have already budgeted for if, at the point of original purchase, you opted for one of the two fixed-cost Service Inclusive or Service Inclusive Plus packages, which cover you for five years or 50,000 miles. With these, after a one-off payment, which can be round as little as £400, you'll have the peace of mind of knowing that all normal work on the car has been paid for during this period, including items such as oil, spark plugs and filters. And what else might you need to know? Well, because all four series Grand Coupes now cost over £40,000, your vehicle excise duty will cost £450 a year for the first five years of ownership. Bear that in mind when adding in extras. Residual values? Well, we expect the depreciation on this second generation 4 Series Grand Coupe to be pretty similar to that of its direct predecessor, which would mean a very competitive retained worth of about 45% after three years and 60,000 miles. On to the warranty package. BMW's warranty only lasts for three years, but it includes an emergency breakdown service and at least it isn't mileage limited, unlike the comparable package you'd get as standard with a rival Audi. You can, of course, extend the warranty with either monthly or annual payments. There's a three-year paint work warranty and the usual 12-year anti-corrosion warranty. As for insurance groups, while well, you're looking at Group 32 or 33E for a 420D, Moving to petrol power, a 420i has ratings starting at either Group 30 or 32e, while for a 430i, the ratings are Group 34 or 35e. For this M440i xDrive, it's Group 40e. One great car can create many such models. Certainly, there seems to be an almost never-ending series of ways that BMW can use the underpinnings of their segment-defining 3 Series saloon to suit ever-changing customer preferences. Here, perhaps, in this good-looking second-generation 4 Series Grand Coupe, we have the most appealing example yet of what this Munich maker can do in the mid-sized executive segment. Not all cars that claim to be coupés are stylish enough to really deserve that title, particularly those that must also accommodate two rear passenger doors. This Grand Coupé, though, wears its badge credibly, yet still offers enough practicality to justify its existence. If you are thinking of a decently specified 3 Series saloon or touring estate, you ought to consider it. 
It's even easier to argue that this Grand Coupe makes more sense than its two-door 4 Series Coupe counterpart. After all, the price premium over that body style is slight and a Grand Coupe offers you more with few downsides. For many, this car will also, right here, right now, be a better bet than BMW's rather similar looking all-electric i4. Overall, the question we've needed to address here is whether this second generation 4 Series Grand Coupe is still the car in its class that does it all. The sector benchmark, the go-to choice in its segment. If you're the kind of keener driver this model has traditionally appealed to, the answer's probably yes. There's a sustained level of excellence shot throughout this contender that key segment rivals in this class still can't quite match. That's something especially evident when it comes to handling dynamics that have been usefully improved in this Mark II model, especially when it comes to suspension and steering response. There's a levity about this 4 Series, a certain joy you get in driving it that the others can't quite emulate. Great then that it does all the sensible stuff really well too. You get a much improved and very lovely cabin with cutting edge media tech, a spacious boot, comparatively decent rear legroom, very competitive day-to-day -day running costs and sensible residual values. Can it be criticised? Well, it would have been nice if the significant price rise that accompanied the launch of this second generation G26 series model could have included M adaptive suspension, which we think you really need to think seriously about adding to the lower powered variants to combat the slightly firm ride. Plus, of course, we could talk about that divisive front grille, but that's a subjective call. At least BMW's tried to give this design some sense of individual identity. And most of the people criticizing this feature are the same ones who complained that the previous generation Grand Coupe wasn't distinct enough from a 3 Series. So on balance, we'd always favour daring design over stifling conformity. Overall, if you're looking at buying a conventional mid-sized executive model, you may well not already have a Grand Coupe on your wish list. If so, then perhaps it ought to be, because BMW here has built a benchmark contender in this class. Just for once, it seems the kind of car you've dreamed about may also be the one you really need to choose.